All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm assuming that I'm on the air at this point in time. I may not be. So when you get a chance, because there's such a delay here, but when you get a chance, if you could, uh, somebody, not 800,000 people, well, there's only 100 people watching anyway, but if somebody could let me know um, if you can hear me fine, if the levels are fine, and we will get started. Okay, so anyhow, good Saturday morning. It's early morning. Oh, if you, did you are. Did you put everything you. It's early morning if you're in uh, over on the West Coast or over in Asia. If you're over in Asia, it's getting ready to go to bedtime for you over there. Anyway, for the rest of us, it's Saturday, and it's certainly an interesting Saturday here. Now, this is going to be a uh, question and answer time. So if you have questions, post them in YouTube. Now, because of YouTube's not always refreshing fast and maybe I'll get a whole lot of questions. I may not answer all the questions. So if you really want your question answered, um, then go ahead and repeat it later on. Now, as an update, obviously the Kickstarter is about to end in uh, 59 minutes. So that's all well and cool and good. Um, but more importantly right now, I have my phone with me. My wife is at a baby shower, um, but the doctor told her when she went in yesterday that the baby could come anytime and she said today she's feeling like it could come anytime so I may have to leave this early if I get a phone call I might not so we'll see but that's it, it, things could get interesting um, but anyhow so keep that in mind uh, where I'm at all right uh, let's see here I am going to start taking questions now and um, well so far mostly I'm just seeing a lot of you can hear me fine. So that's excellent. So I will just wait for a question to show up. Hang on one moment. Oh, the wooden dice towers. Um, yeah, a lot of people fast by the wooden dice towers. I don't actually have a physical uh, one from 2014 yet, but I have one of the, the 2013 dice towers left. Now, the 2013 dice towers, you can see they kind of, this is, they're, they're wooden, this is the size of them. I'm missing the bar here um, due to child uh, things. And they're they're pretty sturdy. I mean, you could take them apart pretty easily, I suppose, and fold them down. But this is kind of what they look like. I just posted some pictures of them. And so if you want to see some of them, there you go. All right. What's my favorite shirt? My favorite hat. Oh, my favorite hat. That's this hat. Love this hat. Although, I really do like my custom Dice Tower hats that I got made, too. My favorite shirt? I'll tell you, as soon as I saw this shirt, I bought it because I think it's hilarious the, to wear bright shirts. And it's also easy for my kids when we're somewhere, uh, there's like a mall or something. They just look for the giant bright person. See, it's, 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 it's safety. Safety issue. Any update or details on a secret stretch goal? For a new video series that will happen when i actually can pull it off i i i have the ideas for it but right now the fact that i'm moving soon i mean that's been my whole week has really been spent working with the moving stuff and the fact that the baby's gonna be born so if you guys would just give me a little bit and let me get those two things out of the way then i'll get to work on that i was already this morning writing some of the script for the new introduction to gaming videos that I'm going to be working on. All right. Let's see here. Uh, do you have any ideas lined up for the Garcia Sam's top 10? Oh, uh, actually, every time we get together to do a top 10, like we just did, at, uh, we got together and recorded the top 10 three-player games. And then we talk about what we're going to do next, and we argue and go back and forth, and finally we pick one. We're actually recording tonight. Uh, because we're not sure when we'll be able to record over the next two weeks for the next one. Now, of course, that's also subject to change, too. Uh, we're going to be doing our top 10 worker placement games. So that's the next one that you have to look forward to. Um, let's see here. No more that melon drink. You know, I really thought I would like it because I like melon flavor, but that was not a good drink. Uh, let's see here. Do the add-on dice towers come with any dice? They do not. Uh, dice are the not the most expensive thing that we produce, but they're not that cheap. And at this point in time, I'm starting to worry that I have not ordered enough dice. So we'll wait and see. I mean, I ordered a ton, but I mean, I think I ordered three thousand. But it may we may give out that many, so I cannot give out any extra ones actually. Uh, the gaming potpourri videos that me and Z did, whatever happened to those? Well, essentially, I'll take the hat off because it's 
doing weird things with the lighting. Essentially, the Gaming Potpourri videos kind of morphed into the top 10. I wanted to get Z involved with the Dice Tower, and he was such a popular hit. And if you notice some of the Gaming Potpourri's we did trick-taking games, they were almost a top 10 anyway. So, it was just, it was an idea I had, and I still don't like the name of it, but, eh, anyway. Any thoughts about Polish games? They're good, as is every other country's games. Uh, let's see. How much of your funding is provided by the Kickstart? Um, 80%, 85%? It's pretty high. It's pretty high. So I'm, I'm, I'm really glad it, it did well. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, because last year it was a lower number, but I also did a lot of preview videos, which provided some income, and I'm not doing those this year. Um, something I'm really glad about because they are a lot of work and they take away from so much of the other stuff I want to do. Are you taking a community suggestion for taking more time off? Well, yes and no. I mean, obviously, I'm going to do what I can. I mean, I've been spending this whole week you know, combining game stuff, working in the house, getting things ready to move, running around, working in that regard. I'm ready to drop everything out of hat and and go take my wife to the hospital and do what I can to watch the kids, etc., etc. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit around and be bored for a month. I'm going to get stuff done. So this week, while I did not get any reviews done, and I'm really sorry about that, guys. I really wanted to get some reviews done. But I did get the top ten list done. I did do a board game university. Uh, we did, I did put out the Dice Tower. And, I, I'm, of course, I was working with the Kickstarter and answering emails and all that stuff, too. You'd be surprised how much time answering emails takes at this point in time. It, it's actually a very... Uh, interesting thing because what happens is people email me all the time and they'll say, hey, I love your show, blah, blah, blah. And they say really nice things. Then they say, these are the games that I have. These, What games do you think I should look for next? And they go on and on. And I love to answer all those in depth, but I simply can't or else I would get nothing else done. But you don't want to be a jerk either. So I usually refer them to the Dice Tower Guild at BoardGameGeekCon. I mean, at BoardGameGeek.com. Um, and... You know, I, sometimes I just get very short answers, and I apologize if you've got one of those short answers from me, but that's that's the reason why. I really get two, three hundred emails a day at this point, so. All right, let's see here. If I could only pick one game, would it be Thunderstorm Advance, Legendary, Dominion, Pathfinder? I don't really like these if you could only pick one game questions, because I don't have to only pick one game. So, I own Thunderstorm Advance, Legendary, Dominion, and Pathfinder. Because they all fit, they all meet different requirements. The, I mean, if I was going to buy one next, the, whenever people ask me these questions, it all really depends on you. Because they're all different. I mean, Dominion is fast mecha mechanisms. Pathfinder has this adventure feel to it. Legendary is cooperative. And it's superhero, which none of the other three are. Thunderstone Advance has... Um, now, that one in Pathfinder, that might be a good showdown sometime in the future. Because they are somewhat similar. But still, eh. All right, bright shirts go with bright minds. Well, then I have a very bright mind. All right, let's see. Uh, I haven't got any questions for a bit. I have got a lot of questions. Hang on. All right. What can I tell you about the Dice Tower Essential line? Well, like I said, there's three games in the Dice Tower Essential line. I already said the first one was going to be the Robin, Robin Hood game. Um, although that may not be the name and that may not be the theme yet. We'll see. The second one is being worked on as we speak. I'm very excited about it, but I can't talk about that one yet. The third one is a brand new game that may or may not be in the line, depending on if we if there, there's some components to it which may not be able to be produced cheaply. All right, let's see here. Um, can you do dice tower caps for the next Kickstarter? Well, Barry, I um. I'd like to do clothing, and I, I'm going to look into a clothing line uh, for Dice Tower. That's one of the things that's on my March slash April list. The the thing is, though, it's just the, the the profit margins aren't very high at all. There's a reason you don't you, you know free T-shirts and such aren't given out as much because it can be expensive. So I'd rather make a nice line that may or may not bring much income into the Dice Tower. I don't think that it would. But something that people can just go buy. But it would be apart from the Kickstarter. Uh, what was that melon flavor beverage? It was just some soda. There's a lot of um, Hispanic sodas in, in the community here since the community in South Florida is very, very 
uh, heavy Hispanic community, so I just buy them because I always like to try new stuff out. I, I think it's cool to – one of the things was from Korea. When we moved here from Korea, somebody said to me, they said, just realize that uh, you will be possibly a, a minority where you go. And I was like, woohoo! I don't care. You know, it's exciting to try other cultures' food and try things. The Cuban food here is really good. I don't drink the Cuban coffee, but that's because I don't drink coffee at all. All right. Do I normally test prototypes? I do not test prototypes unless it is a uh, paid preview. So 2014, my goal is to play less than 10 prototypes over the whole year. And I've already played four. So <laughs> I look, I, I understand prototypes. People love prototypes, but I love the finished games. And there's so much of that. And some of these finished games are like prototypes anyway. Um, but there, there's a lot of that going on. Uh, let's see here. Um, what ideas do you have for the new website? Well, the new website, I like to make it look very sharp and clean and have as much stuff as the current website has, but maybe not hide it, but make it so it's not so uh, ob obtrusive and, and things going on. Um, wow, I'm really dark. Is it because of my shirt? Okay. Anyhow, um, I also, obviously, people want a search engine. People want, uh, I mean, a strong search engine. People would like it to be able to sort things out by ratings and stuff. So those are on my mind while still keeping everything that we have before. All right. The changes can be structural or unique content as well. I don't know that we're going to add as much unique content as structure, although we're still working on last year's goal, which is to add the top 100 where you can make your own top 100. First Ticket to Ride expansion, what do you recommend to get? Again, these kind of questions, um, you guys can keep asking these. I'm going to keep giving you the same answer. It all depends on you. These are better questions for you to ask in the Board Game Geek forums and get lots of answers because unless you're me, which you're not, and you should be thankful for that, um, you're, you're, I, I can't pick just one for you to go by because I don't know you. Each expansion has a different feel. Some are meaner than others. Some are... Um, they, they might be a geography that you're happy with. So, huh, we might break 133,000. That'd be nice. But anyway, okay. Let's see here. Um, how does the funding break down expenses versus salary? Uh, well, I just, I, I did a listing here. And like I said, I'm not, I don't plan to, um, post that. But it, it's, um, uh, wow, uh, 25% salary maybe? There's a lot of expenses for the Dice Tower. Now this year there's a lot of expenses because of some major hardware changes that we're going to make and lighting and expenses and we're traveling and things. Maybe next year my expenses will go down. We'll see. Um, can I make a top 10 games for two players? Well, yes, we've been talking about that though because I really feel... Like top 10 two-player games is two kinds of lists, and we've been having some internal debate about this, where I think there's one top 10 list that I could play with anybody. Think Lost Cities as an example of that. While the other top 10 list, I call it the geeky top 10 list. That's the kind of top 10 list that Magic the Gathering would go on. And I don't think they really belong on the same list. Because if I pick my top 10 lists, they're all going to be, top 10 games, they're all going to be the geeky ones. Because those are the ones I personally like better. But there are some good ones that I could play with anybody. You know, the whole Cosmos 2 player line and things like that. So I, if we do it, it's going to be split like that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, Super Fight. Someone said they were going to buy it. But there's games that do the concept better. With stories, man, it's so hard. I'm, I'm, I'm just getting so tired of these pick two people and have them fight games. I, I, I just, I still think the Who Would Win was the best one because it was the, the easiest one. You take two people and you pick a category. So it'd be Genghis Khan versus Benjamin Franklin and category sewing. You know, I just thought that was hilarious because that gave you a lot to work with, with not that many cards, actually, but because it was that many different people and the categories were different. I just thought that was entertaining. Uh, let's see here. Do I have any new game design projects? Well, that's really back burner for me at this point because, honestly, that's not where my best talents lie. 
I do have a game design that I'm working on with Steve Avery, and I'm basically, he has it. So he's working on it at this point in time. Um, let's see here. Wow, there's certainly a lot um, of games. King of New York, I know nothing about it except I know it's going to be released at Gen Con. That is all the information Yellow has given me so far. Uh, let's see here. How long did you sleep after the 24-hour live gaming session? It was uh, nine hours, I think. Um, I slept extra beforehand, and also I normally sleep five or six hours a night, so that was some pretty hefty sleeping in. Uh, let's see here. What do you think about creating a top 10 classic games? Um, it all depends on what you consider to be classic. That's, that's the problem with that. We already did a top 10 old games list, and that might fit in there. We, I'm thinking about doing a top 10 games from our childhood list, games we enjoyed as kids, maybe. Um, let's see here. What is the game Z, Sam, and you always want to play when you're together? We never have that game. We always argue over what game we're going to play. <laughs> and I say, hey, I have these new games to play. So that's usually what it is. Um, how much Korean did you learn? Just a bit. Um, just a bit. My favorite Korean meal is uh, bude chige, by far. Now, I do like kimchi chige. I do like mandaguk. And I like many things. Bude chige, for those of you who don't know, uh, was a soup that was kind of invented during the Korean War where they were, you know, there was a lot of starvation and people just threw everything in the kitchen sink in this soup. But... They've refined this. And fortunately, where I lived in Korea was Weejangbu, which was known for making the best bude chige in Korea. And having had bude chige from various points in Korea, that is definitely the case. Bude chige has a very strong kimchi flavor, but if it's really good, you put different meats in it. They, they put spam in it, which I know sounds odd, but it really tastes good. It has uh, tofu ramen in it. Uh, you know, it just, it just doesn't sound that good, I, I, I guess, when explaining it. But the combination is amazing, and I would eat it almost every day if I could. That is how much I like it. It is amazing. How many times do I play a game before I, uh, I review it? Depends. Uh, how do you decide to do a Kickstarter fund to Dice Tower in the first place? Well, I saw some other podcasts do it, smaller podcasts, um, notably The Spiel. And I said to Eric, I said, well, we should try it. I said, if it doesn't work, you know, we'll figure something else out. But this is something that it just might work okay. Was not expecting the vast amount of people. I mean, right now, 2,855 people. And we broke 133,000. That's nice. Um, that's just really impressive to me, um, the amount of people. And pretty cool. So we, I really thank you guys for that. Um, let's see here. Will the Dice Tower be reviewing the Eclipse Ship Pack 1? I do not know. I do not know. Sometimes I don't review expansions of games. Um, if I'm not a huge fan of the first game, um, which I, I like Eclipse, but I didn't love it. I know, it's still a pretty cool ship pack, though. I might review it. We'll see. Where do you get a sweet game table like this? From Geek Chic. G-E-E-K-C-H-I-Q. Once I move into the new place, I will do a full review of this table and let you know my thoughts on it. The good and the bad. Um, moving to a new studio. Will be professionally designed. Well, it will not be professionally designed, although uh, the Game Boy Geek is going to be uh, coming in and helping me set up lighting. I know that, I mean, obviously, look at the lighting here. It's fantastic. But yes, lighting is something that's really going to... Now, that may take a month or two for that to come into effect, but it's certainly something that I'm looking at. Um, let's see. Am I going to review Exodus Proxima Centauri Revised Edition soon? Mm hmm. Maybe. All right, let's see here. How does... I already answered that. Uh, how soon till the musical episode? I don't know. <laughs> we're going to do it. You know, the fact was we were probably going to do it anyway. This just gives us the push to do it. But now we have reason to bring in other people on board. Uh, I... You know, the the idea... The, the thing about singing is this. This is this is the thing about singing. And here's one of my rants. But, but this is really true. Why... I, I never understood. Everywhere I go... Um, I, I'm involved in church, and I, I, I sing in the church choir everywhere I went, and occasionally I've led the church choir. Now, I'm not a great singer by any means. I'm not one of those people who go to American Idol and think that they're great and they're not. But most people can sing, and if you can't sing, 
you can be trained to sing, at least where you can sing, on key and in timing. And everywhere I go, I meet people and are like, oh, you don't want to hear me sing, I'm horrible. Ask my wife, and then their wife says, oh yeah, they can't sing. You know, it's they're terrible, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but the fact is, there are very few people, I'm making up percentages here, but I want to say it's less than 5%. And every time I tell people this, they're like, oh, I'm in at 5%, but you're probably not. See, singing like anything else is something that you just have to put work into. You practice it. You do well at it. It's like basketball. Take, for example, how many people are going to make it to the NBA? Well, not very many. Very few. But if you really practice at basketball all the time, you'd be good at it. You might not be able to make the pros or even on the college team, but you'd be really good in your neighborhood. You'd be really good at it. Um, and so if you could practice singing, you'd be good at it. So the point of this is, is that most of the guys involved with the Dice Tower, you listen to our voices, you say they can't sing. You're right. We're not great singers, but we can sing because in various ways we practiced for it. Oh, sorry about the, the rant. That just, okay. Let's see here. Do you feel you might be diluting the Dice Tower brand with so many new reviewers of different quality? No, no. I love having new reviewers. I'm always hunting new reviewers. And every reviewer that we have had so far, with the exception of one, were people that I hunted out and got. And I am so pleased at the reviewers that we have. Sure, they're different quality, and it seems like most of them are better quality than me, um, but it gives you different voices and different people. And I make the thumbnails very different colors, if I can possibly pull it off, so that if you don't like a specific one, you can skip that reviewer, so you, you know to skip the blue ones. Um, and I, I, I love that. I would take more reviewers if I could, because I want every game to be reviewed by the Dice Tower, period. And while we're not even close to that right now, we're closer than anyone else. Okay, let's see. How shocked was I at the increased response from this year to last year? I'm very shocked, really. I was really surprised. My wife is more shocked. And so, huh, we're down to 38 minutes left. But anyhow, uh, let's see here. Am I still teaching? I am not, although, is that Sam Gates that I used to teach? If it is, hello, Sam. Um, I'm not teaching any longer, and um, but I do teach at church. Uh, I teach Sunday school, and I'm the youth uh, director for middle school, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Let's see. The blacks are very pixelated artifacts. Is this from the camera or the video editing software you use? I don't understand that question at all, actually. Um, black pieces. Um, okay. Star Trek Fleet Captain's Romulan Empire is out of print, and they marked it as discontinued. Is this a result of the Tackling's popularity? Now, I don't have any kind of inside information from um, Wiz Kids themselves, um, but I suspect that we may not see much more Star Trek Fleet Captains because of Attack Wing. So, speaking of Wiz Kids. I'm very excited. I'm about to get the uh, uh, Marvel Attack Dice. That's on the way to me right now, it says. Woohoo! That'd be exciting. I love that game. All right, what's the most surprising game you played last year? Probably that game. Although that's a game for this year. Um, surprising games, you know, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but we did do a Best of 2013 episode, and I know I said biggest surprise in that episode. Um, Pillars of the Earth, Stone Age, and Lords of Waterdeep, you like, says Chats. Can you recommend a few more games? I can, and I do lots of them. So, let's see. Ba, ba, ba. Take it to ride. All right. What's a good game to help? And again, Chad, that's a wonderful question for you to go to the Board Game Geek community and ask there. People do a great job at answering these questions. What's a good game to help kids learning? Again, John, that's, that's, these are questions that are really wide open and, um, that would be difficult to, what's a good game to help kids learning? Every single game on my shelf. They're all great for kids learning. So we have to be very specific and like, what's a good game for math and science and history? And even then I would have to sit and think about those for a while. And I've done that. And there's also a website called G4ED, um, Games for Educators. It's a great site to check that out. Um... What's a good game to help kids learning? Uh, I just answered that. Do you pay your contributors? Kind of, sort of, sometimes, maybe? And really, that's kind of an internal Dice Tower thing. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But um, we do help them get to conventions and get them free games. And it depends on the contributor and different things going on. So, But just assume that it's all volunteer. 
the brightest things in the shot are the games. Should take the shirt off, but there's another yellow shirt underneath, so that wouldn't help. Uh, let's see. Any health complications with my son? Has everything been fine so far? Yes, but my wife has been taking shots um, to keep the baby from being born early, and the doctor feels that if she wasn't taking those shots, the baby would come early. So, um, I mean, it's still, if it comes now, no, no message yet. <laughs> if it comes now, it would be early, but it would be early in a, a much safer zone. How do I put up with Jason? Jason's a great guy. I explained this in my last Q&A, so you have to go watch that one. Um, no reviews from you this week. I'm very sorry. I apologize. I meant to do reviews, and it just got away from me. There was a lot of other things going on. I apologize. Um... Was the fact that Fleet Captains was left off the best three-player game just an oversight? It was not an oversight, Chuck. I like that game a lot, but I like it as a two-player game. I don't know that I would ever bring it out with three players. I really enjoy it as two players. Do you know if Jamaica will be reprinted? I've heard that it will be this year. Don't hold me to that, but that is what I've been hearing. Um, have you heard about the Double Six Dice Kickstarter? I think it's cool. I don't know how innovative it is. It's basically just putting... Two six-sided dice on a 12-sided die. That's a great idea, um, but it's not like it's a unique one. There's lots of three-sided dice that are on six-sided dice. I've seen things like that before. I think it's really cool, though. Um, okay. Some people are asking the same question over and over and over. All right, but, and I'm falling behind, but I'm moving. Let's see here. Woo! All right. Okay, guys, I'm apparently really far behind on questions. Um, so, I'm just going to go up to the top here and start answering questions from the ones that I can see, okay? Have ever played a game with Richard Hamm? No, because he lives in uh, overseas. I don't live over there. Maybe we'll meet at Essen this year. Will the Hero Quest remake? Is it going to happen? Probably. I mean, they're uh, not Kickstarter, but whatever the funding site they're using seems to be doing well. Maybe it will happen. Uh, top ten sci-fi games. Will we do top ten fantasy games? Yes, we will. I just didn't want to do them so close together. Actually, I did, but I was outvoted two to one. Um, let's see here. Uh, have you been following the Kickstarter issues that Koo is having? I guess I'll talk about that here because I don't want to keep doing uh, Kickstarter complaints and all my board game breakfast on so many close together. I don't really see what the big deal about it is. He printed, the, the company printed too many of the, the, the coups for the Kickstarter, right? So there was these extra stuff with Kickstarters. Now, first of all, I think a lot of this could be avoided if companies would just stop making Kickstarter exclusive stuff because... Or I think you should make Kickstarter exclusive stuff that's limited and later and then tell people later on you're going to sell it. Now, alternate artwork, I don't care about and all that. But I mean, Kickstarter exclusives, it's a way to whip people up to get cool stuff. But why not make it available later? Unless there really is a limited amount of it. Like the Dice Tower Iron Dyer. Okay. Um, so he has these extra ones and he wants to sell them. But there were people in the Kickstarter who would have preferred him to burn those. <laughs> And get rid of them rather than sell them. And that just seems kind of, I don't know, it just seems a little selfish. I mean, I understand it's cool to have something that not other people do, but it's not that big of a deal, is it? I don't know. I mean, I like having cool stuff. I mean, I have a HeroScape collection that very few people have everything. And I, I do. I have everything from HeroScape. That's kind of cool. But if I had, like, I have some of the unique Gen Con stuff, later on, the... Um, they, they had some promos at, at Gen Con. They reprinted those in packages. Do I, you get mad? Like, wow, I went to all that trouble to get it. Nah, who cares? I'm glad other people can enjoy it. All right. Uh, let's see. What optional rule do you not like to play with with Twilight Imperium 3? Distant Suns. I do not like the little things that are on the planets that when you find it, something happens. They're just too powerful, some of them. You know, one person goes to a planet, they get destroyed. Another plant, person goes to a planet, they get free technology. And in that game, that's just too swingy for me. I like the mines, though. Uh, let's see. Will we ever do old top 10 lists? Oh, yeah. We always do top 10 lists. On the audio podcast, I always look at top 10 lists that we did five years or more 
ago, and then I consider redoing those. I don't always do it, but I consider that. With the video series, well, we've only been doing it for a little over a year at this point. Um, let's see here. What are my hopes for growing the Dice Tower Network in 2014? Well, I like to, for it to grow views. I like to, for it to hit more mainstream. I've actually have gotten an email from Geek and Sundry, the blog, the vlog people, and they want to do a bit of a crossover. So that may bring us some more views. Um, but I mean, I like to get more reviewers. I like, like I said, I like to make things better and cooler. And but I don't really have any like huge growth ideas. I just want to make us a focal force of board game reviewing. What does a die say when he shuts the door? Nothing. That's total gibberish. <laughs> no one ever believes us on that. Do I have a time frame for reviewing Warhammer Disc Wars? Low time frame on that. And the reason for that being is because the next two weeks, and I haven't even gotten the game yet. So I haven't even played it yet. So uh, what can I tell you about the Dice Tower reprint? Well, it's not the Dice Tower. It's Arcane Wonders going to reprint it. Just going to be a Dice Tower Essentials line. Um, I can't tell you anything about that right now. Did I already answer this question? I did. Um, yeah, you have to go back earlier and watch. Do I feel conflicted recommending small foreign games that are difficult for the general public to acquire? Well, I don't feel that conflicted about it because I assume that when I say, this is great, somebody's watching and maybe a publisher will go, we should reprint that. That's how I feel. I feel like anytime I say a game is really great, like Among the Stars or something that's overseas, I feel that if it's that good, it will be reprinted. So that's why I'm not too worried about it. And for people like, I have to have it now. No, you don't. There's a lot of other good games. Does my Geek Chic have a two-sided felt top? Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be kind of weird that it's blue sometimes and red other times. Uh, let's see here. Um, any word on the Pandemic Dice game? If you listen to one of our two upcoming episodes, I don't remember which one it is off the top of my head, Eric actually gives a preview of that in one of those. So that's either 241 or 242. Um, let's see here. Have you ever played Rapa Nui? No. Are you going to update the top 10 list on the website finally? I don't understand that. I mean, we're going to make them look nice. Do you think Breaking Bad would make a good board game theme? I don't know. I mean, I'm never really sure on these TV shows and how well they translate to making a game. What would be the game of Breaking Bad? Catch Walter White? Hide your meth making? I don't know. Uh, will you be playing Robotech RPG Tactics when it becomes available? Maybe. Sounds like a miniatures game, though, so I may not. Have I ever done top 10 Kickstarter games? Already did that. Top 10 Milton Bradley Parker Brothers Hasbro games? Already did that. But we may do them again someday. Have I ever considered doing a paid subscription podcast like the D6 Generation Lost Chapters? Yes, I have considered that, and we rejected it. That's one of the reasons we do this Kickstarter is because we like to make all our content free. I'm not saying that's a bad idea. It's a pretty cool idea, and in fact, I was really tempted to buy one of their podcasts this past week where they did an overview of 2013. I think it's a great idea. That's just not what the Dice Tower is doing right now. Uh, let's see here. Um... Are there any games that will be leaving my collection as you move? No, they've already all left. So if it's on the shelf, I'm keeping them. Well, except for this shelf right here because I haven't reviewed them all yet. And um, actually, most of those games I'm not keeping. Most of the games, here's a sneak preview of the games I'm talking about over the next couple weeks, I am not keeping. In fact, Every game that I review for the next two or three weeks, I'm probably not keeping with the exception of some expansions, like the expansions for Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Um, there are some good games that I'm going to be talking about soon, one of them being um, Theseus. Theseus is a great game. It just barely missed the cut, and I'll get it to someone in my game group, so if I want to play it, I can play it with them. Um, yeah, there's nothing that's really like, well, you got to keep, oh, except the Marvel Hero Dice Master game. But I won't be reviewing that for a bit anyway. What gaming convention should you attend to hopefully play a game with someone from the Dice Tower? Dice Tower Con? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, any plans to do another live play video? Probably. I want to move first before we get this set up. But yes, I have some thoughts on how we're going to do it. 
Uh, my plan on reviewing Quantum. If they send me a copy of Quantum, I will review it. Yes. Puerto Rico is higher than Agricola on my top 10 Euro game list, but Agricola ranked higher than my top 100 list. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it all depends when I make the list, really. They're both excellent, superb games. Any plans for a game section in February? A game section? I don't know what that means. All right, let's see. What role-playing games did I used to play before board gaming took over? Well, there was Heroes Unlimited, which I like a lot, um, except I also hate it a lot, too, and I'll tell you why. Heroes Unlimited is a role-playing game made by Palladium Games, and Palladium Games has their own problems. I mean, you can look at some of the stuff that's happened to them in the past, and it's just... wow. But anyway, they make the best character creation for superheroes that I've ever seen. You can literally make everything. I had like seven books for it with all these different powers. You could make a Batman type hero, you could make a cyborg, you could make a gadget, a detective, magicians, psychics. I mean, you if you could think of the superpower, they had it in there. And you would, I mean, it was great. You would spend all this time making these really awesome characters. But they never actually told you how to play the game. They kind of hinted at it. They would go in great detail about like driving combat. Well, that's not so useful. I wanna know actual, Regular combat. They had you roll these stats up, and then I couldn't figure out for the rest of the game why we did that. And so I kind of just made things up and used almost a D20 system when I played, when I when I, I, I did it. And I liked it. But it also kind of grates on me because it's really hard to run a superhero campaign. And the reason for that is because you have people who are superheroes. So you're constantly having to throw something bigger and badder than they are at them. And they have superheroes. And how do super people level up? And you can say, well, look at Iceman where he's at today and then where he was. You know, I understand that. But comics always have superheroes just be dumb so that the bad guys can beat them and then they get powerful and win back. So I don't know. I also played a lot of, I played some Dungeons and Dragons, not much. Um, and I played Pathfinder a lot. Really like Pathfinder. And I gave it up simply for time purposes. Um... I said Kickstarter fever will be fading. Why do you think that is? Well, let's be cautious there. I don't think Kickstarter is actually going to go down. I think that Kickstarter will still do well, but I think that the excitement for it is going to die down. And I don't have any really strong reasons for that, except that everybody I talk to, and so this is kind of personal, it's not a great logical thing to, to fall back on, but... They, everyone I talk to says, I'm getting tired of doing it. I'm getting A lot of people have complained that they're tired of backing games and then seeing it available for a cheaper price earlier than they get their backed game at an online store or something. So why not just wait for that? So I think we'll still see a lot of Kickstarters come, but I don't think you'll see people go gaga over them unless it has miniatures, Cthulhu, or half-naked women, or a combination of all three and you know you got a hit. Or a game that people get excited about. Um, that you'll see Kickstarters there or cool exclusives or things like that. But I think some people are starting to get a lot wary about it, especially people who backed up front, who backed um, Odin's Ravens, who backed some of the, you know, who backed uh, Glory to Rome. A lot of those people are kind of disillusioned with the whole Kickstarter thing. And a lot of these Kickstarter games aren't that good. Now, that's just the nature of the beast. But people will, pull, will process that and say, why did I Kickstart this? It wasn't that great of a game. And so... We'll see how it goes in the future. Now, I still think you will see Kickstarter on a whole go up because I think more people will discover it and it will continue to rise. But I think the hardcore gamers are going to get not dislike Kickstarter, but just kind of cool on it a bit. Is there a game I no longer have in my collection that I regret giving up? Um... I don't know. There's not many that I sit around and wish I still had, so I'm going to say no for now. Why can't you see or hear anything? Uh, I apologize, sir. Maybe maybe everyone else seems to be able to hear me, I guess. Let's see here. I think I'm way behind on people's questions, but uh, let's see. Will I finally do more video reviews of old games? I'll get around to that. Um, I cannot promise which ones I'll do, although I did promise someone I would do Rune Wars this year, so it's going to happen. I promised. Uh, my favorite civilization building game, probably Seven Ages, <laughs> which is really weird because it's so wonky and all over the place, but oh, it's so amazing. Um, wow, I must be really far behind because I'm still hitting questions that I've already answered. Let's see here. Have I seen Starlight Citadel's reviews? Well, yes, they're very, they're very good. Um, 
the any thoughts on International Tabletop Day? I plan to celebrate it at Cool Stuff Hollywood, Florida. So if you're there, we'll have a good time. What is a good game company to publish a game with a large amount of dice? I don't understand that question, but if you're looking for game companies to publish games for you or things, I would go to www.bgdf, Board Game Designer Forum, bgdf.com. Lots of great info there. And let's see here. Have I tried Compounded? I've not yet gotten a copy of that, although GameSwoot said they would be sending me one, so I have not played it. Do I like Through the Ages? Yes, I'm not as in love with it as some people are, but I think it's a good game. Could I span the camera around the game room? Well, I'm using my computer's thing, so I, I really can't. I mean, I can move it a little. See? Oh, I just blocked it. Uh, um, there we go. How often do I look back at my old textile reviews and think of updating them with video? All the time, but I actually have to still have the game um, and have some time to squeeze in some of the older reviews. I just did a couple of them in the past couple weeks. I did Vabank and I did, um, I did another one, too. So it will happen. It's just the newer stuff usually takes precedence. What do I think about Eric Lang's upcoming game, Chaos Ball? I think it sounds awesome. Eric Lang's a great designer, and Cool Man or Not makes great stuff, and the whole idea of fighting a football game sounds really cool. My best hero in Legendary Marvel and Expansions. Ah, uh, I like Thing, probably. Hulk, I like. Do I think Seafall or Dead of Winter will be a bigger success for Plat Hat? Oh, Seafall. I think will be a much bigger success. I think Dead of Winter will be fine. I don't know, though. But I think Seafall will definitely have a huge success. Will Space Hulk ever get reprinted? Wasn't it already reprinted? It's run by Games Workshop. Those guys don't seem to know what they're doing. Okay. Let's see here. And back up the questions. Um... If we were to make a review, do we need to get permission from the designer or publisher? No. Can you imagine that? If we had to get permission, they would just say, no, you can't review our game. What are you going to do if we review your game? It's freedom of speech here, freedom of the press, um, that, that we can do that. So you don't need to get permission to make a review a review of it. Uh, why wasn't Space Hulk Death Angel on the top 10 stocking stuffer list? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> it's a great game. It's still on my shelf. It just didn't make the top 10. What's the minimum for Thunderstone Epic? Can you do it with just a starter kit? Yes, you can do it with just a starter kit. Um, and it will get more exciting for you as you add each expansion. But yes, you can do it with just a starter kit. Any news on the Battletech Living Card Game? I don't know anything about that. didn't even know that existed. Um, why do people keep asking about the Robin Hood thing? I've already answered that previous in the video. What are the plans for next live gaming? I know that it will be a very specific game night type thing where I'll pick several games that we are going to play and it will always involve one in-depth kind of cool game. Like we'll probably we'll play Battlestar Galactica next time. Then we'll play some maybe middle of the road games that might be interested to watch. And then we'll end with a party game. So I think that will be a good uh, way to follow it. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll always play Tumbling Dice. <laughs> maybe that will be the dice I think. We'll always play Tumbling Dice. Battle Stations review coming this year. What? Why do people keep asking this? It's an old game. Maybe. Probably not, but maybe. Can you ask me for a game of your review? You can, but it really um, it really makes no difference on whether we review a game or not. We review games that are new um, as much as we can because it's useful to you, the viewers. We review games that are old because it's also useful to you. But Requests really don't change anything unless I would get a ton of requests from different people. Then I would consider it. But we just got to do what we got to do. How do we get that hat behind me? Oh, I, that's like $25 hat. You don't want to do that. Um, let's see here. And some people obviously are not listening to my answers. My thoughts, feelings, and reaction about the misprints on the Nothing Personal board. Why, well, I hate that. I hate it. I mean, of all the times I yell at other people, I all I can say is I checked the board many, many, many times. And the only thing I can think of is that the board somehow got reverted to an old playtest version, which is why that happened with some of the text. And we just missed it. I'll take full responsibility, but I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. How, why would I like it? I, that really bugs me. Um, 
Tiny Epic Kingdoms game sounds interesting, but I kind of wait to see these games before I get too excited about them. Is there a game shop in Cape Coral? I don't know. Sorry. Um, will I go into full collector mode? Marvel Dice Masters booster packs, or is the starter set worthwhile in itself? Starter set is not worthwhile enough of itself unless you have two of them. Well, I guess. Okay, let me get it wrong. The starter set's worthwhile. You can go play against somebody else. The starter set comes with eight different characters, and each of those characters has three different cards that you can pick between. So you can you have I don't know eight times seven. I mean eight times eight times eight different combinations that you can take to battle. That's pretty good. And for every starter, I mean every booster pack that you buy, you get two cards and two dice. You add that many more options. So will I go into full collector's mode? Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, how do you choose the reward levels for your Kickstarters? A lot of talking back and forth with Eric Summer, Ryan Metzler. We kind of go over that. I also talk to the cool stuff guys because they're the ones who are shipping everything. I had a lot of input from that. Asked people what they thought about it. Um, I think I did okay. Obviously, I priced the 66 thing too low because of the Pathfinder promos themselves are worth the, the amount of that much more than that. But what do you do? Um, I wasn't, it wasn't like I was trying to gouge people, but I was trying to make it so that it seemed like you were getting something of value, but at the same time, wasn't costing us too much so that the majority of the money would go towards the dice tower. Hey, we're down to 13 minutes and we broke 133,000. That's nice. Will we break 135? That's my secret goal. Not secret, I just said it, but probably not. No big deal. Uh, let's see here. Do I feel intimidated by Eric's voice? No, but it was really weird when I first met him because he talked like he sounded, or actually when I first talked to him in the normal and he talks like that. Eric is the nicest guy in the Dice Tower. Well, there's a lot of nice guys in the Dice Tower. Maybe Brian Counter is the nicest guy in the Dice Tower. There's a lot of super nice guys in the Dice Tower. Um, and so, but Eric's one of the best. Let's see. Have you ever tried burn rate? Um, burn rate, burn rate. Oh, I'm going to quick check on this. Let's see here. Burn rate board game. Why is this name not? Oh, burn rate. Yes, yes. No, I don't like it. Um, sorry, that just wasn't that interesting to me. Let's see, what's the origin of the shut the door ending? I just said it one time in a video. I forget which one it was, and I accidentally left it in, and then said, oh, let's just make it a thing, and we just made it a thing. Just one of those things that came along. Uh, let's see. There are many reviews where one of Tom's kids leaves the door open, and you see him yelling off the camera, shut the door. No, there, are maybe, there was maybe one or two reviews that that happened in. For the most part, it's totally made up. Let's see here. Is there a game? I already answered that. Guys, you need to... John, I already answered your question about people learning. What are your thoughts on playing a two-player game that was based on Heaven vs. Hell? Are you being very specific there and saying, what do you think about Battle for Souls? I haven't played it yet, so I don't know. Uh, 25 minutes. To catch up, someone says. That means I am really far behind on questions. <laughs> All right. Um, who does the animations? Uh, just a, uh, Torben. A guy named Torben does the animations, and he does the voice, and he does that for the... The die does not have a name. We, keep, we had a contest before to make a name, and none of the answers were satisfying. We still don't have a name for the Dice Tower guy. Why be doing playthroughs of games after the little one appears? You mean why be doing reviews? Yeah, yeah. This is this is not our first time around the block with uh, having a baby in the house. Although it is the first time around the block with a boy baby in the house. And it's the first time in five years, which will be interesting. All right. Uh, let's see here. Team up with Rodney Smith from Watch It Played. Huh. Didn't that happen today? Or tomorrow? Huh. Let's see here. Rodney Smith is a great person, though. Um... Will board game manufacturing ever return to the United States? Don't know. There is some happening in the United States. Uh, let's see here. What's a good board game with a die that's greater than six sides? Well, there's lots of them. I just reviewed Myth, which I thought was lots of fun, and it used ten-sided dice. 
There's so many cool games that use different sided dice, and that always excites me. As soon as I open a game and I see that it's like 8, 10, 12 sided dice, I'm like, woohoo! Which makes it that much worse when it's bad! Is anyone from the Dice Tower coming to a UK Expo? I don't know. We don't have anyone specifically from the Dice Tower in the UK. Oh, we have a few contributors, maybe, but I don't know. I'd like to get to the UK. It's one of the countries I'd like to visit sometime, just haven't got there yet. How do I feel about games on Kickstarter? It will be printed regardless of the success of the Kickstarter. Well, actually, I'd like to have some proof of that in a sense that I'm curious how many games has the Kickstarter failed and yet they went and printed it anyway? Has that happened? I'm sure it has, but I don't know which ones have been. Have I played StarCraft, the board game? I did a review of that. You can go check it out. Do you still like and recommend Earth Reborn? Uh, yes, I like it. I don't have it anymore because it just didn't make my top 100 and it just was kind of big and bulky and they weren't adding expansions to it, which was something I was looking forward to. Who won't like it? People who don't like tactical combat games. What's my favorite games from Ravensburger? Off the top of my head, I do not know. I apologize. Maybe I'll do a top 10 from them someday. Um, do I have any opinion on dice used to be the AI of a game like Flashpoint? Dice aren't the AI of the game. They're just a randomizer there. Or the determiner of a success of an action. Like, he, this person says, like, Red November, but I'm pretty sure dice are the determination of an action, like, in 95% of the games I own. So I love that. I think it's great. Have you considered doing a Miami Dice on Pillars of the Earth with all three of you guys? Ah, uh, maybe. Um, do I own the old game Buck Rogers Battle of the 25th century? No, I don't because I do not like it. Looks awesome, but it is not good. Okay, catching up with questions. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see here. Thoughts on the board game rental service, board game exchange. Why I personally wouldn't use it because I like to own my games. I think it's a great idea. Uh, let's see, any news on book three of Yellow's storybook series? You know, they told me what it was, and I cannot remember, but I know they have one. Um, let's see. With Thunderstone Epic in mind, which expansion would I recommend to get with the starter kit? Um, ah, I don't know. Um, the new one that's coming out that's going to have the best stuff from the old series. Let's see. Any timeline for the next live section? Think April. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I like the new segment on Board Game Breakfast for Barry. Okay, I already answered that. Any chance of seeing more top tens? Like the overrated list from Dice Tower Con. <laughs> yes, there is. But we're saving that for the, this year's Dice Tower Con. So we have some ideas for that, um, what we're going to be doing for that one. There's actually at least one top ten that we're saving from the Dice Tower Con, uh, for, for the Dice Tower Con for that purpose. Okay. Let's see here. Um, do you play Dominion Epic as well? No. Dominion is a very different style game. I wouldn't even try to play that one Epic. Although, I kind of get a little taste of that, but I almost always try to play the Black Market, which is a little bit of Epic in it. Uh, let's see here. Do you guys ever reply to new game designs that people send you or ask you about your ideas? Almost always I'll reply by saying go to bgdf.com, go to boardgamegeek.com because honestly, I, I know it sounds mean, but I just don't have the time to look at everybody's prototype idea. If I did, that's all I would ever do. That's all I would ever do. And when you say something like, well, just read the rules real quick, <sighs> that's still a lot of reading the rules. Six minutes to go. Interesting. Probably for you who just watched the games, the the Kickstarter's over at this point. Uh, okay, let's see here. Let's see, will Eric be doing more video reviews this year? That is up to Eric. You'll have to ask him about that. He's very busy doing a lot of other stuff though. So, let's see. Am I going to be on the DLC with Jeff Kanata? Yes. Um, do I know if Among the Stars will be available in the U.S. soon? No, but I have high hopes that it will be. Insider knowledge type stuff, high hopes. Um, can I do a playthrough of Smackatoa? I don't even know what that is. Are you looking forward to NASCAR racing game Thunder Alley? Yes, I did a preview on that one, but I really, really like that racing game. One of the best racing games I've ever played. Get it when it comes out. 
Why does Eric not do many video reviews? Because he's, like I said, he's very busy, does tons of audio stuff. Uh, let's see. Do you know if Jamaica's... Re Are people not listening to some of this stuff? All right. Did that stretch goal new to the hobby? Any idea what it'll look like? Well, the, yes, but it's coming. I'm working on I was working on a script today. Have you ever thought about hiring an intern to help with editing and stuff? Yes, but I think that's going to be a 2015 goal. Let's see here. Do you know if I'm going to start? Okay, I am answering some of these. In okay, I am catching up. I'm very pleased about this. All right. When can we expect to see Z's top 100? Think summer, probably. Can, let's see, do I think D&D next will be better than Pathfinder? No, I don't. I think Pathfinder, the way that they've done it, the way that they've had their people, I think they have a big jump on the Dungeons and Dragons people. But maybe I'm wrong, and I think it'd be, I think we'll see some interesting D&D next versus Pathfinder battles, similar to Xbox versus uh, PlayStation type battles <laughs> later on this year. That'd be pretty funny. Uh, let's see here. Down to four minutes. Don't think 135 is going to happen. Okay, let's see here. Um, have you considered to do a top 10 of your top 10? No. Um, top 10 gateway games, that's definitely going to happen at some point. Looks like everyone here is talking to Ryan. That's fine. Uh, have I talked about the amazing Dice Tower Showdown podcast yet? Yes, you guys should listen to that. We have a new one coming out this week. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. I think I've caught up on questions. Oh, wait. Yeah, people are asking Ryan questions now. Well, I guess he can answer. I'll just sit here and watch Ryan's answers too. Um, wow, am I really? All right. Three minutes to go. Woohoo! <laughs> and now a super secret stretch goal. No, that's I, a lot of a lot of campaigns. You know, sometimes they have these. They're like trying to drum up support at the end, and not really here. I mean, this has already gone on phenomenally more than we ever expected. Hmm. Let's see here. What game would you suggest to play with a three-year-old? Three little pigs. Ah. Anything from Haba. There are tons of great Haba games. Depends if they're a boy or girl, maybe. Uh, no, the three-year-olds don't really mind. Uh, Catch the Match is a great one I like from Playroom Entertainment. Or um, the uh, Game Right version, which is called... Um, oh, I can't remember it. There's a little match game for them, too. It's missing my mind. All right, let's see. Growth of board game market. Are games getting better than they were five years ago? Yes. Yes, they are. Um, oh, but the reason it's growing? More exposure. Downtime of the economy. Internet. Those are my three reasons. Any update on Dice Steeple? Not yet. Baby, moving. Then we can start asking me these things. Also, I need to close down the Kickstarter at this point in time. So we are down to two minutes. Let's see here. Will you consider... Okay, no. Uh, let's see. And again, I'm caught up in questions. Hooray! So I can just sit here for a moment and watch the two minutes that end. It's at 133,951 as I say this. But that's not as exciting as the 2,866 backers. 100 seconds to go. All right, folks. Well, I'm just going to watch this countdown here. Well, I'll quick answer a question. Um, most exciting reprint? I don't know. Any word on Mission Red reprint? I heard that one is happening. But I don't know when and where. Have you ever played any of the cycling games? I have not played any of those, sir. Sorry. What's my grail game? I do not have one. XCOM Enemy Unknown. I'd like to play that, but I don't believe it's out for the Mac. Ooh, we made over 134,000 with 70 seconds to go. If you're gonna pull out your 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 your, your pledge, do it now. Um. All right. Well, I'm just gonna sit here quietly for a brief moment and watch the final minute countdown. It's not that big of a deal, I suppose, and it's not interesting to watch me do it, I suppose, but. It is pretty cool. 45 seconds left. Hehehehe. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's interesting to watch a countdown live. I did not know it did this. Last year, I think I wasn't able to be there when it counted down live. Wouldn't that be cool if my wife called me right when I reached zero and said, come now? That'd be like this epic moment in live uh, YouTube history. But I don't think that's going to happen. All right. Oh, someone just pledged the, in, with 25 seconds to go. How cool. Someone's probably sitting there hovering and thinking. All right. So that brings us down to 10... Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a wrap for the Dice Tower. Ended at $134,071. But the bigger thing is 2,868 backers. Really cool. Fantastic. Thank you guys for backing. I'm assuming several of you watching have backed that. That's fantastic. All right. Well, I'll answer a few more questions, but then I should go because I have a lot of work to do now shutting this Kickstarter down, and I want to get some of that done at least before the baby comes. <laughs> um, but, of course, maybe I won't. So, again, if you are part of the Kickstarter um, and you you want to, to fill out the services and stuff, just I, I just ask if you can cut me just a little bit of slack right now with the baby and everything, but I will get on it. That is my main focus this week. All right. Have you ever played through the entire level seven or Mice and Mystics? I have not played through the entire thing of any game, unfortunately. I, I got close with Descent. Do I own a fishing rod in Florida? I do not. I never was a huge fan of fishing, although I would do it if people asked. What songs will I be singing in a musical? Don't know yet. Uh, will I do a top ten educational games? I will. Someday. Um, why do I mention the U.S. publisher instead of the German publisher? I usually did most of the work. The reason I mention the U.S. publisher is because my audience is almost primarily English speaking and I want to give them the publisher where they can get the game from. I also don't usually have privy knowledge to who is the one who originally published it. Sometimes I will mention the original publisher and such. I don't mean to slight any of the publishers at all. I'm just trying to be as convenient for people there as possible. Also, many of the times I go to Board Game Geek and look at these, and there's 10 different publishers in different countries and languages. So I just pick the one and that – I also pick the one who sent me the game. That's a big deal. Let's see. Do I have news about Tales of Arabian Nights? Yes, I know that Z-Man's working on another one about Arthurian Legends. So I don't know if we'll see that one this year, but I know that they're hard at work on it. I'm looking very much forward to that. Um, let's see here. What do I think about RPG and card games being fused together? Yeah, why not? But it's still an RPG game. Let's see here. Would I ever consider doing a Dice Tower Roadshow? No, probably not. I mean, we do the Dice Tower at different conventions we go to. Any themes I'd like to see? I'd like to see an open market where there's ne negotiation back and forth. I'd love to see the theme of haggling, you know, where I say, oh, I'll give you 20, and I go, oh, I'll give you three, and then you go back and forth. I wouldn't mind seeing a real estate market brought to um, a board gaming. I wouldn't mind seeing more sports done in a good way. I'd love to see a good basketball game. It seems like it'd be hard to do, but I'd like to see that. I'd like to see some stuff based on IPs. I'd like to see a really good Star Wars board game. Um, and so those are just some of the themes off the top of my head that I'd like to see. Cooperative games. When am I going to review Rune Wars? I have no idea. Just it will be in 2014. XCOM Enemy Unknown is on iPad. Oh, don't tell me that. Oh, don't tell me that. Ah. Oh. I did not know that. Yes, I am on Steam. That is how I get my uh, computer games. But I only buy like one computer game a year. Uh, let's see here. Congrats. Thank you, everybody, for the nice words about the Kickstarter. I appreciate that. It's done with. I'm probably getting a whole pile of emails now from, from the Dice Tower. Uh, let's see. Hello from Singapore. Hello. Congratulations. Blah, blah, blah. All right, folks. Well, I think at this point in time, I've answered a decent amount of questions. It's 12 o'clock. I need to make the kids lunch. So I should, I should probably go here. 
Um, once again, thank you to everybody. I appreciate this. I apologize if I didn't answer your question or I didn't get as in-depth as you want it. Like I said, if you go to the Dice Tower forums at Board Game Geek, there's a guild there called Dice Tower Guild. If you can't find it, just go to DiceTower.com and click on forums. It will take you right there. If you have a question, you that's a great place to ask it because lots of people give answers. I can give my opinions all I want, but you'll get a lot of different people answering questions there. So if you say, oh, what game should I get next? That is the place to be. Go there. It, the, the community there is phenomenal. So that's a great place to do that. Um, so anyway, so where we go from here is it's going to take me a bit to shut this Kickstarter down. Um, at this point in time, we kind of sit and watch. I have to wait basically until... The credit cards get charged and the money starts coming in the Amazon type thing. And then when that happens, I will be able to send out the survey sometime this week to people and get that done. Then we get the Dice Towers produced and we move from there. So anyway, guys, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell and you've been watching the Dice Tower.